we got everything? I've got the food. And I've got the water. I'm bringing my telescope. What do you want to look at? Forests, the mountains, and the animals. Then come along. I know the perfect place. We'll go to Waterfall Point. You can see everything from there. I want to see wild animals. We'll live all alone in the forest. And you can't ever be tamed. That reminds me <laughs> of a wonderful little story called Dog's Best Friend. There was once a wild dog of the forest, or rather a wild puppy. He'd been separated from his mother by a terrible storm. But he'd survived because he was strong and full of energy. That didn't mean his life was easy, though, for he had to fight all the time against hunger and cold and unexpected danger. If you found a friend, your life would be easier. So, I'll go find one. The next morning, he met a young wolf, happily playing in the sunshine. Want to be friends with me? Yeah, sure. Uh, what do I got to do? We'll defend each other against cold and hunger and danger. We'll play and tell secrets and be best friends. Yeah, okay. The wolf was distracted suddenly as a hare ran by. In no time, he chased it down and caught it. Hey, Fred, how about sharing? Are you nuts? He who catches eats. Go get your own lunch. Fine friend you turned out to be. The next day, he met a bear splashing in the stream. Goodness, but you're furry. In this heat, I'm always hot. I always get cold at night. Then come sleep near me. What a nice guy. Suddenly, the bear let out a fearsome roar. Hey, you gotta fix it all night. I haven't gotten one wink of sleep. I don't think this relationship's gonna work. One day when the dog lay sleeping, a visitor happened by. Hello, do you know me? No. I'm the world's most fearless rabbit, protector of the small and weak. Think you could protect me? I'm still a puppy. I'll keep your enemies away. While they spoke, a big old buzzard swooped over them. <laughs> Poor friend material. After so many disappointments, that dog was feeling pretty depressed. One evening, he saw a funny-looking creature who walked on two legs, and some wonderful smells were coming from his direction. Here. Wow. Nobody ever did this before. As night fell, it grew colder. The man stirred up his fire a bit and got ready to go to sleep. Come on. The dog kept checking during the night to make sure that he was really safe. But by morning, he'd fallen asleep next to this strange new creature. Maybe he's the friend I've been looking for. You're brown, with rough wild fur, just like a coconut. Come on, Coco! Here, Coco, here, boy! Whoa! But a bit later, the puppy suddenly became upset. What's the matter with you, Coco? A big snake slithered out from under the rocks, but with two swings of a stick, the man scared away that snake. You defend your friends. That's wonderful. When evening fell once more, and they both had a satisfying supper, they sat together and watched the moonlight shimmer on the water. Hey, fella. There are lots of animals in the forest. One of them will surely be your friend. That's okay. I like this one. With that, he rested his head on his new friend's knee. The forest soon fell silent while the big golden moon rose over the river, making the waves dance. Can we stay here till it's nighttime, Papa Beaver? Oh, it'll be so nice. We were going to the waterfall. Let's be explorers when we grow up and explore faraway lands. By yourselves? I'll just do what Coco did. I'll find a friend. But it's not always easy to find friends. Oh, here we are. This is where we'll eat. I say we 
should sit right here. We'll put our umbrella near the water. Wow, look! Let's sit where all the flowers are. There are more flowers over there. What's wrong with sitting here by the water? You better make up your minds before the sun goes down, kids. Well, I'm gonna sit here. And me under this shady tree. And I'm gonna face the waterfall. And you're leaving me alone? Oh, you're right, we forgot. Let's sit here. Yeah, in a circle. I'll tell you the story of a little gray donkey who hated vacations. Golly, why not? Gee, what's not to like? I never heard of such a thing. Well, listen. Okay. The donkey's name is Alley Oop. Now, when Alley Oop's owners went on vacation, they took along the cat in his basket, the dog in his collar, the bird in his cage, and piles of suitcases. I know, they forgot to take Alley Oop. Right, so while everybody had fun, Alley Oop was left all alone in his little field. Vacation. Well, that's not to say the field he was left alone in wasn't a lovely one. In fact, it was an orchard full of apple trees and soft green grass and dotted with clover and daisies. Ali Oop had room to run and cozy places to sleep, but of course he couldn't get out. The field was closed in with three rows of barbed wire and it had sharp points sticking out. But it wasn't a horrible place to spend a vacation at all, until that fateful day that Ali Oop happened to spot a scrumptious thistle growing in his neighbor's field. Oh. <coughs> Yummy! Like all donkeys, Ali Oop just loved thistles, and so he stood there for the longest time staring at this one, so near and yet so far. Hey, fella. What do you think you're looking at? Never seen a bird before? It's the thistle. It's making my mouth water. The little bird began to peck so furiously the thistle that pieces of it went flying like little parachutes carried by the wind right up Ali Oop's nose. That yummy thistle smell is driving me crazy. I just gotta <laughs> sniff it from close up. Ali Oop, soft-skinned as he was, stuck his head in between two rows of barbed wire. Then his front hooves his back hooves, and then his tail, and whoop-de-doo, he'd gotten through. But not without leaving a tuft of gray fur stuck on the fence. And he found himself <laughs> in thistle heaven. Ten, twenty, hundreds of thistles grew in this field. Ali Oop got so carried away with excitement, he didn't know where to begin. I wonder which thistle I should eat first. That one? No, not enough flowers. That one's got too many flowers. And that one's scraggly looking. But this one here looks good. So good, in fact, I'm going to save it for last. Well, one had stinkweed growing near it, another had bugs on it, and so on. When Ali Oop got to the far end of the field, he hadn't eaten a bite. Here's the woods. Must be another field on the other side. The thistles are probably better, too. At the far edge of the woods, Ali Oop looked towards the right, then towards the left, and finally decided to go right. Soon he arrived at a farm, and as quietly as possible, he made another right turn. So as not to attract the attention of the kids playing outside, he found himself in a beet field. He could have eaten one or two, but his mind was fixed on thistles. Then suddenly the scarecrow startled him. He made another quick right turn and ended up alongside a field of rye. A little farther along, a shepherdess was guarding her sheep, and her dog scared Ali. Once more, he changed direction. He found himself in front of a field enclosed with three rows of barbed wire. Say, nice looking field. He was hot, and the shade under the apple tree looked so cool and tempting, the field looked like a paradise. Hey there, buddy. What are you staring at? I'm not that entertaining. <gasps> Apples. He was so thirsty that his tongue was dry and hard like an old shoe. You can't go in there. It's private property. But I just have to get in. He stuck one ear in through the barbed wire, and then his front hooves, his middle, his back hooves, and finally his tail. But he left a big tuft of gray fur sticking on the fence again. He began to roll in the sweet green grass, and he rolled right across the field. And then what did he see? Why, on the other side of the fence, there was a lovely big thistle, the very same one he wanted so desperately before. And you know what? He still wanted that thistle. Then what? I bet I know what happened. Hallie Oop was back at his own field. But it didn't stop him from wanting everything that looked good outside it. Did he ever eat that thistle? 
Well, he'd gotten tired of tearing his fur on the wires, so he just pretended not to hear the little goldfinch who kept chirping, hmm, yummy thistles, just to drive him crazy. In fact, he wisely spent the rest of his vacation rolling in the grass under the apple trees. Ooh, I like grass too. It's good for donkeys and beavers. You're right. <laughs>